Horsetail is a plant with medicinal properties that is one of the oldest, and it's named for the way its stems look, which in the larger varieties resemble a horse's tail. These are long, slender stems with a series of segments or nodes that give them an appearance, similar to the fibers of a horse's tail. Horsetail is one of the oldest plants in existence with a history that's fascinating, dating back some 300 from 400 million years, when, based on fossil evidence, it could reach heights of about 98 to 131 feet. Later, during the age of the dinosaurs, the size could reach approximately 6.5 feet, like the tallest species we have today, moving forward in time to the era of ancient Greece. Rome, doctors of those times, like Dioscorides or Pliny the Elder, already recognized the medicinal properties of horsetail. They recommended it as a diuretic to heal wounds and also to stop bleeding. It is said that Roman soldiers utilized horsetail to polish their metal armor due to its silica content, which served as a mild abrasive. During the European Middle Ages, horsetail was employed in treating illnesses as it was believed to impact the fundamental elements of the human body's humor theory, aiming to balance these humors and ascribing almost magical healing properties to it for addressing various ailments. Horsetail has held significance in of numerous societies. For instance, in pre-Columbian America, indigenous peoples also harnessed horsetail for its medicinal attributes. While in traditional Chinese medicine, it was utilized to address kidney problems, promote bone health, and alleviate skin conditions. Bridging the gap with ancient knowledge, with its effects gradually being validated through animal studies in laboratory settings and some human trials. It has been used for urinary system issues because it has diuretic properties, meaning it increases urine elimination through substances like flavonoids and saponins that contribute to this effect. This helps to eliminate excessive fluid retention and can be beneficial for problems like hypertension, conditions associated with fluid accumulation in the body, as well as for kidney issues, such as kidney stones, and it has also been used for urethritis. This diuretic effect that promotes fluid elimination has also been used for weight loss. However, this is an indirect effect that leads to weight reduction, but through fluid loss, meaning it doesn't replace the need to focus on a varied, balanced diet and on physical exercise. Horsetail is good for the skeletal system because it's a natural source of silica, which is a substance that aids in collagen synthesis, also improves calcium absorption and helps calcium to bind to the bones this results in stronger bones and also benefits the cartilage. Taking into account that horsetail contains 25% silica in its dry weight, which is the highest concentration found in all known plants, it is important to note that while it cannot replace osteoporosis treatments in cases of fractures, it can serve as a complementary therapy. The silica content in horsetail offers various benefits for the skin, hair, and nails due to its antioxidant properties. This leads to an enhanced appearance of the skin, hair, and nails. Topical application of horsetail, such as in creams, ointments, or compresses soaked in the infusion, has been effective in reaping these benefits. Additionally, horsetail extracts have been incorporated into nail polishes, particularly for individuals with psoriasis, affecting their nails to help prevent deformities. Also, in the form of tan hair lotions and even applying the infusions after washing the hair, to strengthen it and to give it more shine. What are these properties due to? Mainly, as we've said, to its abundance in mineral salts, especially silica, but also potassium, magnesium, manganese, and aluminum. It also has plentiful flavonoids and phytosterols and a small amount of alkaloids, such as palestrine and the nicotine, all this gives it antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties, and it has also been shown to have activity, antibacterial, and antifungal. What are the indications for horsetail? Well, the EMA, the European Medicines Agency, approves it for traditional use as a diuretic in 
flushing the urinary tract, and also for minor urinary tract issues. There are also other organizations that recommend it for the treatment of post-traumatic edema, that is, swelling that occurs after an injury. Additionally, it is suggested for aiding in the healing of wounds or the, the healing of ulcers that just won't heal. And for this, preparations are used that are designed for application on the skin or on these wounds. It has also been used as an adjunct that is to assist alongside other more conventional treatments for kidney stones or for mild urinary tract infections. Also for the consolidation of fractures and also for aiding in weight loss, although here the key will always be, as usual, a balanced diet and physical activity. Remember that when you have issues like these, you should always consult with a healthcare professional. What are the ways to use it? The most common form is herbal teas, specifically infusions. It's also available in powder form, which is typically used in capsules or tablets for those who don't want to make infusions. And we also have liquid extracts, tinctures, and then the presentation forms for application on the skin, hair, or on ulcers. How do you use the infusion? You use the green stems, which are already sterile, in the form of dried herb, where you put a teaspoonful in a cup, and then water that you've poured is placed over the cup with the herb, about 8.5 ounces, and you let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then you strain it. And this liquid can be consumed either cold or hot, three or four times a day. The amount of this teaspoonful, according to the EMA, should be about two or three grams. The EMA is the European Medicines Agency. When in powder form, the recommended dose is 570 milligrams three or four times a day, which, as I've mentioned, is usually sold in the form of capsules or tablets. If you have any health issues, I say that what you need to do is consult so that a healthcare professional can tailor the treatment to your needs or your medical history. What adverse effects or issues can there be with horse tail? Firstly, you could have an allergic reaction. This is always possible. Secondly, there might be digestive symptoms from excessive consumption and also because this excessive intake is linked to an increase in silica, which could become toxic, and because symptoms of nausea, vomiting, confusion, even as it also contains a small amount of nicotine, excessive consumption could lead to symptoms related to this excess nicotine, including palpitations, nausea, vomiting, confusion, and issues of this kind. Also, it's important to consider that it contains a substance called thiaminase and what it does is break down thiamine, which is vitamin B1. So this can also lead to fatigue, irritability, memory loss. There can be confusion or muscle problems in coordination if this thiamine were to decrease significantly. This is more likely to happen in people who already have a low thiamine or vitamin B1 level in their blood, such as in alcoholics or in people with poor absorption due to an intestinal problem or people who follow a very low-calorie, very unbalanced diet, who could more easily have these problems if they consume horsetail, especially in excess. Then it's not recommended for people with kidney or heart problems, especially because it can cause alterations in blood mineral levels, specifically potassium. It may lead to dangerous drops in potassium levels not advised uh, for pregnant or interactions can occur with drugs like diuretics, commonly used other conditions, potentially boosting horsetail's effects. Also, lithium for bipolar disorder accumulate more in the blood, increasing toxicity risk. Diabetes medications, as shown in studies, tending to lower blood sugar levels. So, this should be taken into account because it could enhance this effect. Similarly, with antihypertensives in general, it could lead to a greater tendency for low blood pressure and the treatment would need to be adjusted. That's why it's better to consult with a healthcare professional if 
you have any illnesses or are on any kind of treatment to avoid complications. Here are some other videos about health issues, medicinal plants, and foods, so you can continue to learn about these interesting topics. Thank you very much, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.